Well, hello and welcome and welcome and hello. Thank you for tuning in to Un Poco Moss. My name is Dan Deals. On behalf of Hurricane Lopez and Stock Karen, we'd like to say welcome and hello. It is September 29, 2023. Topper time check is 2.43 p.m. Market's been closed for almost two hours now. Um, it's a beautiful Friday out here in Los Angeles. Looks a little bit overcast, like we might be uh, expecting some rain here soon. But um, no rain on our parade today here, guys, with the SoFi stock. Ticker symbol is S. O F I, you can see uh, right here behind me below stock Karen. Guys, a uh, very strong week. Uh, SoFi, as you may note, on uh, Friday was really attacked. Huge uh, borrowing on the stock it was held down with even more borrowing Monday, Tuesday. Um, and then just basically started to uh, dig out of the hole there um, Monday into Wednesday, gapped up a bit. And then you just sort of see this stagger step um, up, up, up. And on Friday, you know, gapped up huge, was up to like 820. I don't know what was the high today, uh, $8.30. And then really uh, hammered it again back down with this sort of, sort of uh, gap up and uh, sideways and down motion. And then it took another little run up in the afternoon is basically kind of uh, mirroring the uh, action on the NASDAQ, which was big green in the morning and then uh, traded down all day, sort of went red there briefly at lunchtime, then popped back up in the last uh, hour or so of trading. But um, on the week, just very, very strong. Uh, the stock was down below $7.50 on Monday and then uh, closed out right around the uh, $8 mark today. So that's that's a very strong move back up. I talked yesterday about that sort of uh, range of support. $7.40 kicked in. So now I think you kind of have two support levels or you could call it a support range, whatever you want to call it. Um, I thought eight bucks was solid. They, but I don't think the move below eight was anybody dumping. It definitely wasn't institutions dumping. Um, it was just shorts. It was just mechanics um, taking a run at the stock, probably accumulating some shares, uh, wanting to cover here uh, some shares on Monday or Tuesday. Um, you see big buys, um, some of these candles, and uh, that's probably covering activity or. You know, I can't be sure, but there was a lot of shares borrowed from uh, basically the entire week. Like even today, um, net borrowed shares was like a million. Um, so they were still borrowing more shares today than they were returning by a million. There was only uh, 28 million shares traded. So it's not as high as it has been. It wasn't like, you know, the 9 million net borrowed last Friday out of 38 million. That was a huge percentage, but you know, it's still significant. It still puts a drag on the stock and the stock was still uh, up 22 cents on the day. Guys, let's take a look at the chart. Like just, I want to be brief because I know, um, you know, it is Friday. You guys have other things to do, but let's just take a look. Um, this X up here is where I expect to be um, at earnings when they announce net profit at the uh, beginning of February uh, 2024 for Q4 2023. Um, this is where we are right now, sitting at about uh, eight bucks, um, coming up off that support level. So that's where we are right now. If you look at the chart, guys, it's just been a story of, you know, a very steady decline down. It basically traded sideways from May, sideways and down um, from May all the way to the end of 2022. Then it made that uh, brief run up until, uh, you know, basically lasted a month traded sideways. Um, all these runs, guys, they last like a month. Like the algos are running these things. You see it like the stock goes up for a month and then, you know, lo and behold, three months, it goes sideways and down. Then it goes up for a month and then, you know, three months sideways and down. So it's been basically, I don't know, just over three months and it's been going sideways and down, sideways and down. So I expect the stock to go up for about a month and then it's just, unless the algos let go, like the algos have been running the stock, but guys, there's some interesting things going on. Like the algos did not, they were not able to kill all the options. I mean, maybe they didn't want to, maybe some of these were the smart money, but these 750 options actually paid and you know, they're probably opened as a hedge, different things. But if you look at, um, there's this narrative that like institutions don't want to buy the uh, SoFi stock guys look at, you know, aside from these insider grants, like 
look at these buys. The Vanguard Group has 74 million shares. These are reported uh, just end of August. Uh, BlackRock, 38 million. State Street, 13 million. And then even Charles Schwab adding, they have 4.6 million. But you know, Teachers Insurance Annuity Association, College Retirement Equities Fund, they have 2.3 million shares. Uh, Credit Suisse has a position. JP Morgan Asset Management even has 520,000 shares. They added uh, 10,000 shares. So you know about ARC. But then if you go back to the headline, you see an interesting one. And these are the buyers we need. These are the buyers I expect to come in ahead of net profit or once we get to net profit. Level four, they have 10,000 shares. Who cares? But these these are still nice, you know. Another hundred thousand nine from Price Yon. I don't know that, um, you know, it's probably a hedge fund, I guess, or some type of asset management company. Maryland State Retirement Pension System buys uh, one uh, eleven thousand shares, which is nice. This is what you want to see. Maryland is probably not a huge uh, fund, but the State Retirement Pension Fund. Then you see. Um, then you see down here, State Administration of Florida. So this is the Florida retirement um, in the first quarter. They purchased a new position in SOFA. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong uh, company. The firm owned 496,000 shares of the company after purchasing additional 116,000 shares uh, during the first quarter. So the State Board Administration of Florida Retirement System owned 0.05% of SOFI worth uh, $3 million at the end of the uh, reporting period. So... Um, this is what you want to see, guys. This is institutional buying that sticks. If you keep growing, if you keep making money, if you eventually return dividends back to your shareholders, these pension funds, these types of uh, institutional investors will stick with you for decades. And that the, those shares being taken off the market by institutional investors, they're locked away for the long term. That prevents these short long hedge funds and these shorters from playing games with the stock. Guys, they have had an absolute field day with the SoFi stock for a long, long time. And that's because, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, impulsive, emotional of our, uh, you know, brethren, the retail investor in this stock. And they're easily manipulated. And the market makers know that. And they know that this herd of sheep, all you have to do is light a little spark, start, start buying, start the stock going up. People come in, they'll come later and later and later. And where it doesn't make any sense to be buying and they're totally, you know, they're totally missing the boat and the game of, uh, you know, musical chairs. Everybody else has already sat down, finished their drinks, said goodnight and left. And they're still, you know, circling around like I'm buying, I'm buying. I'm the euphoria. But, um, you know, guys, the short stay, like I said, wasn't a heavy day of shorting, but look at the cost to borrow, guys. 14%. Even uh, utilization is way up in the last seven days, up 8%. Cost to borrow up 3%. Days to cover up 6% just in the last seven days. Shares on loan back up to 90 million. That was just down into the 60 millions. Free float on loan up 3%. Even as estimated short interest has come down a little bit. So um, the short is basically itself has been flat. Um, the price of the stock has recovered back to, uh, you know, the channel basically that it was in from eight to 10. So, um, I think we're looking at basically consolidating again, uh, sideways and then making a move up. And this just, um, you know, I'm just making obviously a rough guess here about what the price action is going to be, but, um, you know, this I'll zoom in just, this is, uh, this is where I think the stock is going to be, sort of 1375. The X kind of moved on me, but keeps coming up against this line. So I think, you know, it'll probably come back down before that gap net pro and then take a big gap up and make a big run up to that, you know, $13 plus area. Um, that I think it really should be in uh, once it's making that gap net profit. Don't forget, you know, this SPAC was offered at 10 bucks. That was a couple years ago. Um, the execution and the growth are basically undeniable. Um, I think it's probably more important. Um, Piper Sandler reiterate assigned the hole that uh, people are like, oh, they're angry at nine bucks. But guys, that's still 12.6% upside on the stock. So, um, you know, it's like even a, even the Bears guys have upside on the stock. I mean, Piper Sandler has been a bear. I think they were at seven or six. 
Um, look at the bologna sandwich, though, and um, a guy like Chia Pet, David Chiaverini. He hasn't reiterated his $3 sell for the last two months. Remember during, like, Q1 uh, into Q2 when the stock was low and being attacked um, mercilessly by the shorts? He was reiterating up to, like, twice a month, reiterating, downgrading, putting out negative notes. I think there was one month he did it, like, four times. Uh, so the Chia Pet has basically been silenced. Uh, he's not growing. They're not watering that Chia Pet. The clay is dry, and he's withering and dying because, again, his job is to be wrong. He's one of the worst analysts in the industry. He has a success rate of 34%. His average return is in the negative. Then you got this forehead, the beak, the bologna sandwich, Juliano Bologna. Over at Compass Point, he's not that much better. His success rate is 41%, though he does have a small positive average return. So he is not as big as a pile of shit as uh, the Chia Pet, but he is an incredibly huge uh, sack of shit. And you could... Uh, show a drive-in movie on his forehead and he also kind of has a squish face which is where your mouth and eyes and features are squished together and the rest of your head is normal size so it appears that your chin and your forehead are larger than usual but um that's neither here nor there that's probably not something we should be going into but in any case guys um the sofi stock basically i want to keep this short but um you know i never do that basically the short thesis at this point the growth is there and guys I would say deposit growth, the, the rapid, rapid deposit growth and direct deposit is even more important than membership growth because these deposits are what funds your actual, you know, profitable enterprise, which is lending out money. You need deposits to lend out and that, you know, having your own deposits in house, having that bank charter reduces your cost of capital and you make more money on the loans especially if you end up holding those loans on your book for a certain amount of time on your books because you're making a huge spread between what the loans are costing you and what your borrowers are paying in interest. It's not an extremely complicated business. They're like, well, banks have been doing that. Everybody's like, they're just a bank. But the difference is they don't have the legacy costs. They don't have the branches. They don't have all these people. They don't have all these unprofitable legacy businesses. They don't have all these crappy old clients who are just coming into their branch and being like, man, you know, my great grandson wants a book of $2 bills for his birthday. Can you go back into the haberdashery in your vault and print some up? And it's like, oh, Jesus, you're trying to make a deposit and the, you know, the ATM won't take your check or your phone deposit won't take you. You just want to get in line. They have like, you know, one thing in the, the, the bank looks like a library from the late 1970s, all these like weird orange toned carpets and these curved like wooden counters, you know, look like they belong, you know, some, something out of studio 54. And it's like, there's just all these spaces back here, these cubbies, like, what are you doing in this bank? You guys have one teller back here. You, you like, like an infrastructure for a small city back there. There's always some lady just doing nothing. They accost you in the freaking lobby. But I mean, I'm just sick of it, guys. I'm sick of it. Them shorting this stock down from nine bucks to 740 in a couple of days was just the height of arrogance. These, these douchebags, these turds, these Lester Diamond like country club golf hustlers, these sacks of shit, like, What's the difference between a sofa short and a sack of shit? He's like, I don't know, boss. What is it? He's like, the sack. Um, no, guys, I'm not saying the shorts are, you know, human pieces of shit. But, you know, this stock has been one of those ones they just decided they were going to, like, beat the hell out of. Now, a firm, Carvana, which I was totally wrong about, like, that did go up. I was like, they're really going to run that up. But I don't, that doesn't mean they can all sell at the top, guys. That's the thing. You have to make a market. It doesn't matter if a few couple of outliers are willing to buy and sell at a certain price. What matters is where do you make a market? Where do the last of the buyers, the, the rational buyers, really come in? That's where you'll see it level off. That, that long candle that's just no real volume up there in it, that's, you know, those are turds that are chasing. And, you know, those are, those are people that buy the very top. Those are people that sell the dip and smell the rip. And um, those are many of you folks, my viewers, the turd army. You, you guys, we make a lot of bad decisions. Let's, uh, let's knock it off. Let's get our shit together and let's uh, start being just a little bit better. Guys, um, the SoFi stock ticker symbol S O F I. Let me give you the winning formula. Um, it's not, it's not that hard guys. They lend out money. It's a simple business. Um, the, the market gives absolutely no value to Galileo. 
which I think is just insane. But basically they're saying, don't tell me, show me. Like, don't tell me you're bringing on these new accounts that they have their own customers already. So you're not starting at zero. You're gonna have existing uh, account, existing customers with these accounts. They're coming on board. Where's the revenue? Let's see it in the ER. And that's what I think people are gonna be looking for in the ER coming up in a month, definitely coming up in four months. They wanna see some action out of Galileo. We paid a lot of money for Galileo and Technesis. They're talking about saving, you know, $70 million a year within SoFi over the next five years and even more after that, which is all well and good. But we want that instant gratification. We want them sweet, sweet, sweet SoFi dollars. We want to see the share price reflect what we believe to be the actual value. I mean, SoFi is growing their balance sheet so quickly, their deposits and their loans that the book value keeps going up. So book value keeps chasing uh, the value of the stock uh, quarter after quarter. Guys, I've said it before. I think they can add $3 billion worth of deposits in uh, Q3. And I think they can add, oh, 18 or even $20 billion worth of deposits in 2024. I think by the end of next year, you could see SoFi with deposits of close to $40 billion. Um, and they started less than two years ago with less than $1 billion in deposits. So you do the math, guys. I was told there would be no math, but the growth is absolutely undeniable. The execution is also undeniable. Um, there is going to be money coming in from these student loans, new customers coming in, new cross-selling. But the formula, guys, is the bank charter, which other fintechs and neobanks can't get anymore. They're having to use somebody else unless they already have it. You have the bank charter, plus you have lending to the best customers, the customers with the highest credit scores, the best jobs, who don't default. And you subtract the legacy costs that we talked about just a minute ago, the branches and all the other bullshit, that equals a superior business model that is going to be a free cash flow machine, that wheel strategy. Think about it, guys. These institutions that were buying in in Q1, they were a, a year in advance. They knew when SoFi was gonna make a profit. They can do numbers. They listen to management. They can call up management and say, listen, you know, we read your report. We asked questions. You say... You know, are you sure about these numbers? They're like, yeah, we're sure. We plan this shit out. We're not guessing. We dial in these numbers every fucking quarter. Are you blind? Look at these charts, guys. Look at these numbers. Look at what management's telling you. Look at what they've been delivering. Execution is there. The growth is there. The deposit growth is what's important. The deposit growth is what funds the profitable business enterprise. Um, Galileo, other things are going to become gravy. I think those are going to make a ton of money um, in the future, but we do have to be patient. The formula is there, guys. They have all the good parts of banks, all the things that make money in banks and fintech, um, but they don't have any of the bad legacy parts that have a lot of extra cost. And they reduce their cost of capital by having that bank charter. It's massive. They're able to attract people, giving them great rates on their deposits. And they're able to give better rates on loans. And they only loan to the very best. Their reserve ratios are, you know, way, way, way healthier than the big banks, even the healthier ones. They're like, they, they, they have like half, if their reserve ratio is required to be 8%, they're at like 15, 16%. I know there's six or seven different numbers. We've gone over them in different videos. I'm not gonna claim to know them all from memory or what they all mean, but basically it's how much money you have to have on hand versus the loans you have out, you know, the different types of assets you can count. And it's basically what is the, what does your balance sheet look like? Like how much how much could you sustain if you were to have defaults? Like, are you safe? Do you have reserves? Are you prepared for a rainy day? Because a lot of people think it's going to be pissing rain here pretty soon. And SoFi is going to be in big trouble. I don't think so. I think SoFi is going to continue to do well um, in a high interest rate environment. I think they're going to do even better when rates start to top out start to go down because you're gonna have all the benefits of home loans, more and more people coming into the universe of people that wanna refinance their student loans. You're gonna have all these businesses that SoFi hasn't really had a chance to uh, run yet, hasn't had a chance to get customers in with yet. SoFi's only operated in very adverse conditions and you have student loans guys starting up um, next week. 
So th that catalyst is there. I don't know how big it's going to be, but it's certainly going to be there. It's certainly going to get new customers. You have football season. You have SoFi becoming more and more of a household name every single day, every single quarter. The short thesis doesn't plan out. You have still the ability to buy this stock 20% under the SPAC offering price with everything they've accomplished, with all the execution, with all the growth, with the fundamental strength the company is showing and the technicals are there, guys. This thing is going to get up to that 1350, 1375 level after it makes a net profit. The writing is on the wall, guys. The institutions are buying in. Don't be fooled by the narrative that the insiders are all dumping and institutions are all dumping. It doesn't bother me if SoftBank was forced to sell a few shares in a margin call or Chamath sold a few shares, blah, blah, blah. The fact that pension funds are buying in is very positive. They're some of the most conservative institutional investors out there. All institutional investors are not created equal. Short, long hedge funds, you don't want in the stock. Retirement funds, you want in the stock, guys. Learn it, know it, remember it. It's SoFi stock, guys. Ticker symbol is S O. F I. My name is Danny Deals. The show is Un Poco Moss, where we give you just a little bit more. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, pay your student loans on Monday, turds. Your bills are finally coming due. The chickens have come home to roost, Bobby Boucher. And it's high time. It's high time they did. Um, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, want to send a big special shout out to Princess Jay. Um, she encouraged me to start this channel. I was, um, you know, indifferent and lazy and stupid. And she said, why don't you do it? You know, I have to listen to you. Why don't you let the world see what I'm enduring every day with Danny deals here at the house? And I was like, okay, honey, I'll expose the world. I'll, I'll show them you're the true hero. So princess Jay, thank you for putting up with me. And now, uh, all of you can see what she has to go through. It's not easy. It's not easy. Then don't even think about Cutes. Cutes has to listen to me on those walks where I'm blah, 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 blah. It's like a chatty Kathy doll, but you pull your own string. Um, if you've ever seen planes, trains, and automobiles, that's a classic. Guys, happy Friday. Um, enjoy it. Your stocks will be here to torment your mind on Monday. Don't worry about it over the weekend. The markets are closed. I'll watch your shares for you guys. Send them over to my house. They can go on a play date with my shares. I'll put them all in my... Uh, you know, safety deposit box and they can chat and get to know each other. I promise I'll give them back to you on Monday. Guys, have a great weekend. Appreciate you watching. Uh, it's Un Poco Moss. Blah, blah, blah. Piss off.